welcome to Dad Fights. Ever wonder what would happen if you put two TV dads in the ring? Find out with your hosts, Adam and Jeremy. I'm glad you made up your dad. Dad Fights. I was the creator of Dad Who's ready for some fatherly advice or a heavy blow to the skull? Dad Dad All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to the brand new season three of Dad Fights. And this is the, um, well, I just want to say a happy new year, uh, 2021. <laughs> yep, we, uh, we all survived the Jumanji stage. That was pretty good. Um, personally, I do want to apologize because last year, um, my wife and I took a trip to San Francisco and typically on New Year's Day, we eat black eyed peas with her family, which brings, if you don't know, it brings good luck for that year. So totally last year was my fucking fault. I am sorry. But this year I already ate my uh, black, eyes, black eyed peas and, and ham and stuff, so we're good. Sorry, I was selfish last year. So It's, it's all good, it happens. But I ate some New Year soup. Thanks, Mama. And, uh... Yeah, 2021. It's uh, we're putting 2020 in the rear view, and uh, I don't know, just moving on up. Moving on up. Yep, moving on up. So uh, here we go. Here's to a, a better year for everyone. Salute. Yep. There's gonna be a lot of face licking because that vaccine is on its way, and uh, we all got six hundred dollars yesterday. So how many people do you think are gonna try and buy the PlayStation Five now? Um, yeah, like everybody. They're gonna be more sold out than they are already. Yeah, it's it's going to be backlogged, and good luck. Good luck, suckers. It's going to be like uh, the new Xbox. Like I don't think anybody's going to get that anytime soon. Bill Gates, get your shit together. Yeah. You want to play uh, old Xbox games? Come on. Yeah, and you too, PlayStation. Come on. Come Dude, on. I just want to put my old Halo, Halo 1, and the new Xbox, and just play some Halo, you know? Hey, was it, was it Halo 2 that we played with uh, A-Train? Um, A Train. Come on, you got when we play with Tim Kelly and like, he had, he had oh, yeah, yeah. A Train, and that's when we're playing online. <laughs> that's right. And he kept saying yeah. A Train bitches to everyone. It was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, Halo Two. Okay. All right. Yeah, because Halo Two is the first one that did like the online server, and that is true. Yeah, good times. Grand times. Well, all right, man. Let's uh, let's get this uh, first season show for season wait first season. Wait, hang on. Season three, let's get season three, the first episode. Let's get it up and running, man. It's a special one yeah, too. Let's, let's let's get meta, dude. Yeah, it's the the meta season. We're bringing twenty oh, yeah. twenty twenty one. We're coming in hot, meta yep. hot. Yeah, no fucks given, and uh, just we're just going for it. Going for it, and uh, basically, if you folks don't know meta, we're we're pretty pretty much putting the same actor. Who's played two different TV dad roles? Well, those two TV dads are going against each other, so it's gonna be a long, long, strange trip for all of us. But it's gonna be a good time. What a long, strange <laughs> trip it's been. Hey, I'm glad you brought that song up because one time, um, my brother and I we went up to Lake Pleasant, which is a lake in Arizona. It's very lackluster lake, <laughs> but uh, we went up there and we ate acid with our friend and we stayed on the boat. And the whole night we were just chilling on this boat. Just like listen to like Buckethead's Coma and I believe Permutation by Bill Laswell. We were just tripping the whole time. And I remember I had this like styrofoam light in the water and I was like moving it around and I had I created this fish vortex where like all these like little fish were up top and then like bigger fish were like like layers of it. It was crazy, man. And because I was on acid it made it funner. But um I was spinning the light and then like out of nowhere, like it was, I think we were listening to Permutation, so it was getting all like super drum and bassy and I was spinning it and this big old fish comes out of nowhere and just like eats the fucking little fish and it was cool it was a good time why were we talking about that <laughs> um because uh long strange oh, long, oh yeah. there, there we go oh yeah <laughs> I was, here we go i'm going back i'm going back so the all reason right, being right. was so the next day like you know we, we stayed up all night on the boat and then the next day like we're uh we're coming home and that song was on the radio and it like it fit perfectly as we're packing everything up packing the boat up and whatnot so LSD. All right, yeah. <laughs> hey, all right. Hey, and then, then I uh, hey. I came home and then I walked like two miles to work to get my check and they're like, Jeremy, you look all right. You don't look, you don't look so right. I'm like, I'm just tired. <laughs> As the tile in the store was like moving, I was like, oh, that's great. 
All right, I'm gonna, oh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk back home in the fucking hundred degree weather because I'm stupid. Yeah, and then take a uh, take one of those naps because uh, your brain done overloaded. Straight, you need a nap. Straight done overloaded. Yeah, good times, man. Yeah, so that, yeah, that's a Jeremy fun fact for y'all. Yeah. Yeah, so what? I guess we should jump right into uh, the albums of the week, sir. Should we just go ahead and do that? Yeah, let's let's get into let's it. Let's go, man. We take we, it away, or we don't even gonna... slack around here. We're just moving. Um, I, I'm super talkative. I guess I'll go first, sir. Um, you sound like you drank some coffee today. <laughs> <laughs> coffee, dude. I have been mixing it with the uh, um, hot chocolate mix, making a mocha. Apparently, oh, I didn't know that. Was, I didn't know that was a thing, but apparently that's a mocha. I didn't know. Oh, I've been uh, doing the same thing, but with protein powder because I need to gain weight. So I've been doing like weird mocha with chocolate protein, and it's gross. Nice. But it's good for you, well, I think. For you. Yeah. yeah. And coffee, yeah. All right, man. Well, uh, my CD for the week is um, I was doing some uh, work around the house, and I put on an old oldie but a goodie. And this brings back to what I would like to call the dark ages when I was a teenager. But the uh, album I'm picking for the week is Insane Clown Posse's Riddle Box. And I'm also picking it just to force Adam. He has to actually listen to a little bit of ICP to do the little sample. Yeah. <laughs> you see how happy he sounds? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, fun fact about ICP is uh, me and my sister, we decide, we, uh, we're doing a little research on how um, people become juggalos. And it's... um. Well, you got to be Mormon, and then you got to do meth. Meth and the Mormon religion equals... Juggalos. What are they called? Juggalos, yeah. Because I guess uh, my brother-in-law grew up in Mesa, and uh, Mesa has a huge uh, Latter-day Saint community. Yeah, that's true. And 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 a a meth problem. Yeah, 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 and a meth problem. And the kids that did meth and were Mormon in high school became juggalos in their 20s. and. Huh. Yeah, that's that's our theory. I don't know. That's a really good one. I think it's it's yeah, it sounds good. I would really, I guess, I hate to say it, like I said, dark ages, but like my sophomore year, my friend introduced me to this album, Riddle Box, and for me, um, I always liked shock music, like Gore, for example. Like, and it's shocking. Like that's I, that's like my thing. So when I heard Insane Clown Posse, it was like basically the the best description of white boy rap you can get. Um, it stuck to me at that time. I was like 16. I hated everything. Everything sucked. And they agreed with me. So it kind of stuck. Um, but the album, or the song I will pick for that album is my personal favorite, Dead Body Man. Before you start yelling and cursing my name, remember something's wrong with my brain. Insane. <laughs> Second I was born, Dr. Thumi against the wall. Kicked open the doors, let me with me down the hall. I'm sliding and I'm bouncing off yeah no no backstory just it's it's a weird fucking song they're weird i mean if you don't know them you apparently are not from around here yeah but i'm not mormon and i never did meth in high school so i don't know where i fit in with the juggle i guess i was never a juggalo i mean i had the shirts i never did the makeup though i just had the shirts Oh, thank God. You dodged a bullet there. Yeah. <laughs> I think I had, like, <laughs> two or three ICP shirts at the time. Good times. I will uh, give it a listen while I edit and insert that. And and now you can remove it from your brain, Adam. There you go. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what what magical album were you listening to this week, good sir? Uh, well, this week um, there was a little talk on Twitter about this band because in one of their songs they say... Uh, put 2020 in the rear view so like this song got some some hits or people listen to it and i'm like oh let me listen to some of their other albums and the band is anna managuchi i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right but the song that says put 2020 in the rear view is miku but that's not the album i want to talk about this week the album is their 2013 album endless fantasy and um it is it is just some good video game music. Like it sounds like Japanese rock, like you know the anime style J rock. Okay. Yeah. Plus uh plus video game music, and it's it's fucking fun. Like if you want to like just take down Sonic the Hedgehog and get all the Chaos Emeralds, like put this album on and just get down. 
Hmm. But there's a song on there called SPF 420. And just because uh, recreational marijuana, I I, uh, I like that track. It has nothing. To do. It's instrumental. It's all instrumental. But uh, I like the name. Nice. And insert here and enjoy. So are they all instrumental or just that song? Yeah, all their albums are instrumental except for the songs they do with singers, and then it has lyrics, and it's it's fun. It's fun. Good, just good fun music. Cool. I'll check it out. Oh, and if you have Spotify, we have a playlist called Dat Bites Playlist. Recommended songs from the podcast. And Whoa. yeah, all the songs we recommend. Really? A lot of the walk up music is on there. Yeah. Nice. Nice. That's good. Yeah. Well, Get Spotify. Thanks, Spotify. Thanks, Spotify. And thank you. Give us money Stitcher now. And YouTube. Give us some of that Joe Rogan money. Yeah. So we can like talk about or, DMT or any money, just yes. something. <laughs> give me money. Buy me an Arby sandwich. Just give you so the there's meat. a there's a whole block in uh, in the hood that I'm living in now, and it's it's one complex, and it's Dunkin' Donuts, Buffalo Wild Wings, and Arby's, all in the same complex. And I'm like, damn, that's Arby's money right there. Just they're just flexing because they can. Because they they own all those. They own all three of those. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. It's quite the meaty plaza. It is. Yeah, they have all the meats. <laughs> we got the meat. Oh, I was listening to, uh, what the fuck was I listening to? And they're like talking about Arby's and they're like, did you know you can get a sandwich that has all the meats on it? And I'm like, yeah, me and Jeremy talked about that two weeks ago, you fucks. Yeah. Get in line, suckers. That's us. Yeah. <laughs> We knew about it because we're actually fans of Arby's and diarrhea and Mountain Dew. <laughs> oh, you, you, you speak of Mountain Dew. I'm not a fan of Mountain Dew. Not yeah, my thing. Yeah, me neither. That's gross. I mean, I'll drink it. I drank it <laughs> straight from the tap into my stomach when we worked at the sandwich shop because I'm a sick fuck, and that's what I did. Mine was always Dr. Pepper. And then if I was hungover, yeah, it was half pink lemonade and half water. And then we had that, like, Sobe Life water on tap, and that was... Oh, yeah. It's good. It's good stuff. That stuff wasn't too bad. Man, if I had a nickel for every time I made fucking sandwiches hungover. Good times. Yeah. Good times. Yeah, or very stoned. Yep. I was uh, I was just going through, like, YouTube videos. You know, you go, you get sucked into that vortex of YouTube shit. Yep. I don't know if that happens to you in the oh, mornings, yeah. but I'm, like, drinking coffee and watching YouTube videos. But, um... There was one dude who did, like, a little history about the Wii. And as soon as, like, the startup music and the Wii Sports thing hit, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, (laughs) I don't think I've ever listened to that sober. Like, I've always been super high when I heard those two songs. Yeah, because every every time we played the Wii, man, we were, like, not on this planet, man. Yeah, dude. It was like, and I'm like, oh, my, that's that's so crazy. Like... (laughs) How that one song can transport me back 10 years. Yeah, it, it's, yeah. I fucking, oh, the Wii. I took that thing everywhere. Everywhere we went, I had the fucking Wii with us. Just, this is the fucking shit is what it was. Exactly. Man. Exactly. You didn't fuck around. Yeah. <laughs> remember that game? <laughs> There's a, oh, fuck, what kind of game? I can't remember the name of the game, Adam, but it was the one that was like, hamburgers, meatballs, and they're like telling us like the food order. Yeah. Okay. And you're like, it tells it tells you quietly in the in the in the controller you have to put up to your ear. It's like meatballs. <laughs> you remember, like you're like, oh, the 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 remote has a, a little speaker on it, and I was convinced that like it was like two way communication. Like I could talk into the speaker and it would make it go. Like you're like, I don't think it's a microphone. I think it's just a speaker. I'm like, you don't know that. They're listening to us. I guess at this beautiful point, sir, we should get back on track here. Would you like to do the family fun facts? Oh, uh, yeah. All Hit right. it. Hit that song. Right. Hit up them theme music, please. Hey. Family fun facts. Um, Family fun facts. Well, my guy this week is... uh. Oh yeah, <laughs> I guess both our both our guys this week is uh, Jerry Stiller, you know, that guy. I have uh, 
Frank Costanza. Mr. Jeremy's representing Arthur Spooner. Arthur Sexy Spooner is what he goes oh, by. Oh, yeah. Because he's a sex machine. Yeah, he is. Are you going to do the James Brown stuff now? or wait? I'm going to save it. I'm saving it. I'm okay, saving it. okay. Oh, sex machine! Ah, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't stop. You can't. I, I can't. I can't at all. Well, little Frank Costanza, here's a family fun fact for you. He may or may not be living two separate lives possibly three possibly three like he may or may not have two separate families i mean king of queens lives in queens and uh they're from astoria queens them costanzas you know probably just they might live in the same neighborhood and he's like i'm tired of your shit i'm gonna go stay in the basement (laughs) but here's another family fun fact um so frank in the 90s had a, a weight loss camp in Pennsylvania called Camp Hope. He let some guy sign his checks, pay his bills for him. Uh, he had to file a Chapter 11 bankruptcy and then move back to New York with his tail between his legs. And it was all good, good times. Camp Hope. Camp Hope. That's all I got. Family fun facts. It was a good time. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of hilarity at the Camp Hope. Yeah, a lot of good, a lot of good stuff happening. Fat shaming. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, well, my family fun fact. Um, once again, with all of his, his other separate lives, he actually had a son who lives in San Francisco, and Mr. Spooner was getting tired of his son-in-law and his daughter, so he got out of the packed up, moved out, got out of the basement, and took his ass to California. Well, the whole time, because Mr. Spooner is a ladies' man, straight up. So the whole time, he basically wanted to, in his own words, crush some pussies. Crush the pussy up in San Francisco. He didn't even care. He even wanted to tag team some chicks with his own son up in Las Vegas. And his son said, Dad, you're just too much for me. And his son, a sucker for love, during that whole time, got wrapped up in some chick who took a trip to Mexico and had a whole weirdness happen with his quote-unquote new wife. During all that time, though, Arthur Spooner was living at his son's house, just crushing it, like a cold captain in San Francisco. But then, Arthur Spooner didn't know that one of them, the chicks that he was crushing, was actually a dude. And he got kind of distraught about that, because that's not how he rolls. So, um, he ended up moving back into the basement, back in Queens, with his son-in-law and his daughter. And he never talked about it ever again. Family fun facts. I like it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. yeah. There you go. Fun. There you go, Mr. Spooners. Very fun, fun facts. And for those new listeners, uh, Family Fun Facts is basically uh, us making up conspiracy theories about these shows, uh, tying them into other movie television roles that they've done, and uh, trying to put it up on Wikipedia and seeing how long it stays up there. Family Fun Facts. Family Fun Facts. Do 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 do. All right. Hey, you know what? And I, I'm glad uh, you said it beforehand that we introduced our characters. We should do a whole show where we don't even introduce the characters. We just go for it. <laughs> That's going to happen one of these it, times, it, dude. One of these yeah, times. Yeah, it's bound to happen. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we got the, the madman from uh, New York, Mr. Frank Arthur Spooner Costanza. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm excited about this one. So I guess before we get started and we bring out these badasses, or one badass, uh, let's go ahead and have the lovely Jamie explain the rules to Dad Feist. Go ahead, my dear. Each dad has 23 hit points. Using a polyhedral eight-sided die, most commonly used for tabletop RPGs, each host will call an attack and roll the die. Number rolled determines damage. And the first fighter to zero points loses. All right, and there you have it, folks. And here we go. Let's so bring these bad boys out. Let's bring these bad boys out. Now, before we bring out these bad boys, Adam and myself, uh, we usually, because of pandemic and timing and issues, we do this over the phone in most cases. So we're never around, but we are two good buddies, so we always trust each other on our rolling. So with that being said, Mr. Adam, let's see who goes first. All right, I go. Three, right. two, one, and Two, roll. one, go. I got an eight. I got I'm three. just kidding. I didn't, I didn't get an eight. I got a four. Hey, take it away. And uh, hey, all right. bring these guys out. Let's, let's do this thing. All right, so uh, Arthur Spooner, uh, he's coming out 
to the song Down and Out in New York by the one and only James Brown. Ah, this is right. Uh, my James Brown Tourette. Sorry, guys. Sorry, it just it okay. happens. I mean, you have to. But you talk about James. You have to. You gotta talk about grits and gravy. Yep. Ah, ah. All right. Anyways, um, so Mr. Spooner is coming out to that song, and he's just coming out with, basically, he's just wearing boxer shorts, a wife beater, and sandals, like the Jesus sandals with socks. He's just not giving a fuck today. That's so a, that's he's coming a, out. That's a good look. Got a, Got a couple stains on his shirt. You don't care. He's just out here to whoop some ass and crush some poontang. So here we go. You know, we call that look uh, Carl. The Carl from Aqua the... Team. <laughs> All right. Well, I totally uh, say, Frank Costanza, I would totally say something, but... he's uh, walking up to the ring to one of my favorite bands, the New York Dolls, Subway Train. And he's wearing fatigues, the fatigue pants, and a tank top because... Uh, you know, Frank Costanza, he's a war vet, Korean war vet. And he busted out those fatigues and tank top, and he did his hair like guile. Nice. Nice. Sonic boom. All right, man. Well, I guess you got I am the roller? first one to go. Yep. Take it away. All right. I'm going to take it away. So Mr. Spooner, he's going to come out, and he's going to bring in his first attack, which is the Spooner slap. Going to slap him right across his chest, straight WWF style. Get him. Or WWE is what they call it now. And holy shit, I got an 8. Nice. Watch out. Alright, so that was a good slant. Nice red mark on Frank Costanza's chest. Good times. Bring the pain. Alright, well, Frank Costanza's coming in with uh, the Upper West Side Uppercut. And that's a 1. Oh, swing and a miss. Looks like he was coming more from the west or east side on that yeah. one. All right, well, here we go. Mr. Spooner is going to take a tip from his daughter who escaped Scientology. So we're going to go with the Scientology is whack attack. Bam. And I got a six. Nice. nice. Mr. Spooner's coming in with this one, man. Yeah, holy shit. He's like, I am the king of queens. Bitch. <laughs> All right, well, Frank Costanza... He's going to come in with the Festivus Flash Kick. He took that Ooh. one out of Guile's, you know. Out of Guile's Rolodex of sweet attacks. Here we go. That was a good attack. And that's a six. Nice. Got All right. Him with that back flipping sweet ass kick. All right. So for the folks taking score at home, we got Arthur Spooner with 16 hit points left and Mr. Costanza with nine hit points left. Here we go. All right. So Mr. Spooner is going to take a tip from his son-in-law, Doug Heffernan, and he's going to go with the Paul Blurt Mall Cop Cop Out Kick. And that's a three. Good effort. Good effort there, Doug. Good effort. Good effort. All right, Frank. You really got to dig deep with this one. Come on, Frank. Get that inner inner rage that you always have. Yeah. Well, I might have to mansplain this attack. He's coming in with the uh, Manzir Monkey Club. And that's basically <laughs> when uh, you throw on a bro's ear and you put two fists together and you swing for the face. <laughs> swing away, sweet, uh, sweet Frank. And that's an eight. Nice. All right, so with that one, that brings Arthur Spooner with eight hit points and Frank Costanza with six. So it's still any Frank's or Arthur or Jerry's game right now. All right, well, I'm going to go with the Arthur... Well, here comes Arthur Spooner with his attack, and it's called the Stiller Stillman Stocking uh, Scissor Kick. <laughs> hey, I spent all night thinking about that one. And I got a four. Ooh, oh, so close. So close. To so close. Right All right, man. All right, Mr. Costanza. All right, Mr. Costanza, you roll a perfect eight here. You could walk away the the champ. Let's see. Let's go with the Serenity Now spinning pile driver. Just coming in, bringing all the heat. I swear to God, I roll an eight. 
Nice. Yeah. It's All right. Damn. Great. Frank Costanza came back with it. And he's putting on the the man's ear. He's doing that little <laughs> cha cha chance with Kramer. <laughs> with Kramer. <laughs> That's fuck? great. Well, Serenity now. Yeah. Yeah. That. <laughs> Two eights in a row. Holy shit. Maybe I should uh, drive over to the casino and play some slats. Yeah, man. Yeah. Play it's because I ate that good luck soup today. Yeah, there you go. You're yeah, off to a good yeah. start, man. Yeah. Off to a great start. Well, all right, man. Um, it totally turned around that fight. That was good. Yeah. Um, Since we're not going to be doing a post-fight interview t for this episode because... uh. Well, because I'm lazy and I got a I got a, a project I got to knock out for work this weekend, so um, we can just talk uh, about uh the next matchup now. All right, and who do we have lined up? What, who is the Meta Dad? It's uh Jason. It's all about Mr. Bateman. Yep. Yep. Jason Bateman, our favorite our favorite dad from uh, Netflix Ozark, and uh. Arrested Development, probably everybody our age's show from. Yes. The late 90s. Which is also Netflix stuff. now. It is, yeah, that's right. The fifth season went straight to Netflix, or fourth season. Yeah, I think fifth. Yeah. It was a good time. I kind of wrapped it up, and it was a lot of fun. Good times. All right, Um. now should I take. Because I've never seen Ozark. And you have, I believe? So I heard the show was really good, and everyone's like, that's like the best show on Netflix. So I watched the first episode. And, uh, like, 20 minutes in, he's, like, Jurassic Parking it in a minivan, about to pick up a hooker. And I'm like, ah, I can relate. I'll take him. He's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I always have money in the banana stand, so it all, it all works out. It all works oh, out. the frozen banana there's always, stand. There's always money in the banana stand. But don't take our word for it. Yeah. post-fight interviews only on YouTube.